Hi, welcome back to Navigating the Unknown. I'm Andrea Stern of Stern Rep and Ask Stern Rep. In these webinars, we cover the topics that come up for photographers. Today is one of those large topics that we needed a part two for. Thank you, APA LA, for making this webinar continue to happen. Today, we are so excited to bring back our guests from episode 13 on marketing. We have a lot to discuss today and finish. I don't know if we actually will finish, but we want to get through a lot of this topic, marketing. We are joined by our co-host, LA photographer and LA, sorry, APA LA board member, Hugh Kretschmer. Hi, Hugh. Hey, how are you? And Hello. consultants, Amy V. Cooper and Julie Skarwecki. Hi. Hi, to, everyone. To continue this conversation. Oh, it's a good one. Let me turn to Hugh first. Hi, Hugh. Hey. Hi, Andrea. Thanks for joining us and, and donating your time to APA LA and uh, these webinars. I've, it's been so great to be a co-host. I really, really appreciate it. We're big fans of Astern Reps and, um, you know, APA, I've been a board member for about three years. We're all about advocacy, community, diversity, and I just feel privileged to be able to, you know, scheme these concepts and bring them to our audience. So thank you for that opportunity. And thanks for our esteemed guests for rejoining us. I think this is episode th three for you guys, right? I yeah. do believe. Mm -hmm. So um, I just really, really appreciate all of your time spent on this. So thank you. Back and, to you. And knowledge. You guys have so much to share. I mean, that's why you're on here for the third time. Yeah. Like it's like this depth of information that we want to just keep hearing because this is the stuff mm -hmm. that can make someone's career. For this sure. is everything. Yeah. 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 So let me introduce you two officially. We um we have Amy V. Cooper. Hi, Amy. Hi. How are you? Is one of the top photography consultants in the US with over 20 years of experience working as a professional photographer, photo editor, ad agency, art buyer, and photography agent. That's a lot. Wow. She has the unique experience of having been part of every single side of the camera with a variety of clients, including UPS, Microsoft, Mary Kay, Coca-Cola, Netflix, Teen Vogue, Esquire, and many more brands. Thank you for having me. It's so exciting to be back. Good to have you here. And Julie Skarwecki is a leading photography consultant working with photographers in the US and abroad to strengthen their business and marketing practices and reach their own dream clients. That's a big topic, dream clients. Bringing a decade of industry experience working with artists individually and as an agent, Julie's goal is to provide photographers with the tools and knowledge to take control of their businesses and reach their ideal clients. Throughout her career, she has helped connect with photographers, with agents such as Amazon, Facebook, Coca-Cola, Nike, Under Armour, Adidas, Gatorade, Whole Foods, Target, Chevrolet, Lyft. I, there's too many to list there. <laughs> so hi to both of you. Hello. Uh, hello. And let me, let me just say a few, just an official thing. Attendees, you are a major part of this webinar. I mean, that's why we do this with you. We want you to be a part of this. We have already received a lot of questions, but keep them coming in and we hope to have time for all of them. So ask away and please put questions in the Q&A area, not the chat area. Thank you. Then we'll get to them. Then Hugh will get to them. Remember to join Hugh and I at the end of this discussion because we like to stay on and talk about our guests. No, we like to stay on and have our own short wrap chat, we call it, to share our thoughts about the episode. So stay on afterward for that. Today, let's cover the topics we didn't get to last month, which are social media, database maintenance, paid resources, networking options, and how all of these are affected by the changes of today's pandemic situation. Mm. Ooh, there's so much to say, so let's jump in. I know I asked last time, but I, I love this question. And I want, I want us to all answer this definition. What is marketing? But before I ask you, I went on Google to search it. And this is interesting. <laughs> marketing is the activity set of institutions and processes 
for creating, communicating, delivering, and exchanging offerings that have value to customers, clients, partners, and society at large. And then this, the challenging part that it said, not all businesses approach the need to market their goods and services in the same way. So what do you, how do you see marketing for, like what is the definition for marketing for photographers? I would go by what I said, I think last time, which is that marketing is building relationships and it has to include a lot of consistency. And why, why consistency do you think? Because everyone is, everyone's so distracted. Our buyers and editors are seeing a lot of photographers every single day. You have to be consistent so that they start to remember you. And when they start to remember you and your branding and your beautiful work, then they start to have a sense of trust in you. And that's when they'll start to consider you for a job if they don't already know you or have been able to meet you in person. Yes, I agree. Julie, what do you think? Um, I would define, I guess, marketing to me is a, a set of tools and practices that serve to connect a service or a product with the people who want to buy that service or product. Um, and then specifically for photographers, just, you know, agreeing with what Amy said, what you want to do is become top of mind to people. And the only way you're going to do that is through consistency. Yes. Hugh, what do you think on this? What, what's your definition of marketing? It's really simple. I, I just think it's sharing. I, you know, that's, I, that's how simple I need to make it for me yeah. because marketing is such a big word. And I think it's a, for me, it's a little dirty because I don't like to market. You know, it's like, you know, uh, promoting myself is, but sharing is something different, you know? And if I've got something I'm really passionate about, um, I just, all I do is share it. That's all, I have no expectations at the end of it. I just share it um, because I think my perspective is I might be able to provide something for them. I've a service, a product, um, and if I'm feeling my heart is behind it, it's going to be easier for me. That's so. a good point. So you believe in it and then it's sharing. I feel like if we don't believe in it, then it becomes sales, you yeah. know, then it's marketing and it's more difficult. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mine is, uh, staying in front of clients with sharp branding, really important, uh, to catch their attention and reassure them that we are the specialists in whatever we're showing them, mm. to add to their list. I believe all clients have a list and we wanna get on their list, their potential, who they look at when a job comes up. That's my official definition. So why do people hate marketing? Let's just start there. Why do people hate it? It has a bad connotation to it. Uh, we sort of said this before, but I think people don't know the difference between sales and marketing. And to them, sales is like a bad thing. It comes across as being kind of like icky feeling. But marketing, like Hugh said, that's just kind of bringing people, it's just sharing. You're just sharing what you have. You're trying to attract the people who want to buy what you're selling, but you're not necessarily like in a constant state of pitching. I think people hate marketing because they don't understand it. Why do people hate anything? Because they don't understand it. Mm. This is not something that they teach you in photography school. Um, I think it can feel very overwhelming. And I think there's a lot of fear in what if I do it wrong? What if my clients always say, I don't want to bother anyone. Am I bothering people? Um, that's your, there's a lot your of clients meaning photographers. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I, can I add to something about that? This, this is a new realization that someone told me about a few years ago and that art directors, producers want to know who you are. Those that are interested in and willing to receive want to know who you are. They want to know your work. They, they have a need for what you have to provide because they've got clients that need what you can offer. So you're, in a sense, I'm helping them with their work by letting them know that this is what I do. Yeah. Right? So the idea of whether I'm bothering them, it may be, but 
you know, if you take a respectable, respectable approach, approach to them, being mindful of their time mind, and respect them and approach it that way, then I don't think I'm, you know, bothering them because I'm, I'm coming across respectfully. I think you know? it also, Hugh, you said before that if you don't really believe in it, like that's the key because we don't want to be fake we don't want to put ourselves out there and pressure ourselves. So maybe there's ways that people can find marketing. I'll tell you, I have a couple of photographers who are not the social beings. They're uncomfortable with it. So they don't do it. Mm. And some part of me feels as their rep, that's okay. That's probably better because if they're so, if you're so uncomfortable at something, I say, find some other way. So find a way that does work for you. Yeah. Figure out a way, uh, there's a lot of different ways to market yourself. You can network, you can do email, you can do social media, figure out which one you're most comfortable with, because if you don't mm. like it and, you not, and you're not comfortable with it, that's gonna come through. That's something we talked about at the end of our last webinar. Right. If, if yeah. you're feeling that much resistance, don't put that energy out into the world, figure out which types of marketing feel good to you. And yeah. you know, if you can't find someone to help you delegate some of those things, yeah, absolutely outsource that. You don't really need to be doing like your own social media all of the time. You know, if you reach a certain level where it's like you're seeing that that having a, either it's stressing you out too much or you're not doing it and you feel like it's having an impact on your bottom line, then just hire someone. And That's if you're not it. if you're not good at something, don't do it. Like if you're not the designer or the writer, you hire people. Because as I said before, your branding is everything. It has to be very strong. And if you're not good at something, either people don't do it mm -hmm. or they do it not so well. And either will work against you. Yeah, but invest in your business by investing in a designer and a copywriter if you need it, because you are sending this marketing to people whose job it is to create gorgeous marketing every day. Right. Their standards are quite high. Yeah. So we have That's to, we're in this business. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But I also think it's the work that you, that you show, that you share too, if your heart's not behind it. What do you mean, Hugh? Well, just try to push it forward, right? So I think the best investment that people can make is to do testing, you know, do work that they are passionate about. And then from there, it just kind of unfolds. For me, that's the way it's worked out for me. That's so true. It adds fuel to the tank. If Absolutely. you believe in it, you go for it. Yeah. What, what's today's marketing kit? Let's hear about your kit, Andrea. I love this idea. A marketing kit. How important is that? I mean, it also changes in time because it used to be a portfolio. And then it was also an iPad to show video. So a marketing kit for today, I... I have a CRM, uh, that customer relationship management. I use direct mail. I also use agency access to send out email promos. So we have to have a promo template. You have to be ready with everything. I have a one sheet promo that I put on emails that isn't a promo per se, but it's a one size. It's not a long promo. It just, hey, if you wanna know about this photographer, this is what they look like. Things like that, uh, I, I haven't said my whole list, but anybody else? I'm taking notes. So <laughs> your client list, <laughs> your client list or your CRM if you have one. Um, and I agree, you also need to have PDFs for the different types of work that you're going to be promoting. That but was a PDF is different from the one sheet and the email temp promo that I was saying. Right. PDF, let me just say, is a, I see, I see it as this big, but it's a little booklet of that type of work that that client is going to, if they want to see more, you have something to supply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your newsletter software and your newsletter templates, um, you also want to make sure that you have a folder of all your branding assets in one place. So your logo, your bio, your fonts, your headshots, um, thank you cards even if there's like, if, if that's a virtual thing. Um, and I think you should have a consultant or an accountability partner. 
uh, and an email signature was the thing that just came to me. A lot of photographers and their emails either don't have a signature or they don't have their website in their signature. Your signature should have your name, your phone number, your email address, your Instagram, a link to your website and a link to join your newsletter. Make it really easy for people to stay in touch with you. 100%. Hugh, and remind me, let's talk about that in the wrap chat. That okay, is no key and I didn't think of that. That is so true. And then I also say you need a playlist because you need to get pumped before you send your marketing out. That's really important to me, along with setting intentions, which we talked about last month. And, um, you know, shameless plug, I also think that everyone should have my 2021 marketing calendar, which is on sale this month. So a marketing calendar and making sure the most important thing you can do is block time to work on your marketing consistently. So every Tuesday morning, every Wednesday afternoon, whenever you know you're going to have time and not be disturbed, that's probably the most important thing. I love that. I find myself doing it at night after things are quiet, like on LinkedIn, I'll go and people really respond to me at 8, 9 p.m. It's shocking to me. Really? I see a lot of photographers sending out their marketing emails on a Friday afternoon. And I feel like no one wants to read your email. Yeah. On a Friday. You might as well throw it in the trash. Julie, what do you think about mark email timing? Oh yeah. Um, Tuesday and Wednesday is really like the only days that we should entertain. <laughs> I'm open to Thursday too now. I've researched I last, as a last resort, but I just feel like if you're going to be waiting and pushing it off, like, or if you're not doing it on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then you're waiting until Thursday, that just feels to me like now you're rushing maybe to get it out before Friday and it might not be as perfect as you want it to be. So yeah, I like to aim for the, those two days. Julie, what do you think of the marketing kit? Any additional thoughts on that? Gosh, you guys said so much, which was great. Um, schedule think, system. A schedule system, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, something like later is what I use um, or something like that. You're talking about like social media? Yes. Yeah. So I do later. Yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. I also think it's important to put together, and Amy sort of mentioned this, but really putting together your style guide um, and like a one page thing that has, you know, your like, I would say your top five, like brand images, your fonts, mm -hmm. your colors, your logo, the other iterations of your logo um, so that you can, you can use that when you're kind of going through everything, like your email signature, you can make sure that you have a logo that's present there. Um, you know, on your website, you know, that you have the right colors, the right fonts. Um, one thing, this is kind of off in left field, but one thing that really bugs me because I think people just don't know is that they don't, they don't make a little thing that goes in your browser for your website, which is called a favicon. And it's just the little icon that goes in the browser. And you can tell when someone hasn't does it, done it because then their website provider just has a default one. So then if someone has your like website open on their computer they're not going to know which like it's just going to kind of blend together with everything and it's just a small opportunity for branding that's missed basically where do we get that that's interesting um well i use square well you have one andrea on your or, oh wait what aala has one you can see it right now if you look like at zoom how they have that little like blue thing it's like a little mm -hmm. camera um you just make it. It's like a version of your of your logo. Oh, okay. You just make that fits into that into that mm. size. But yeah. When you put that all together, it's just so much easier. It takes so much guesswork and around like making your email promos or your printed promos, like you know what your Instagram should look like. Yeah. So really you, would you put something like your logo on your profile page on social media rather than your your mug? I like a logo. Yeah. More than, unless it's like, unless it's a good photo, if it's just, you can kind of tell when you're going through Instagram, you can kind of see like, who's just kind of using it for fun and who's like using it for a business purpose, you know, like they have a well lit portrait that shows their face or is like somehow expressive or they have a logo. Um, but I like the logo. I think it's a nice branding opportunity. It's a little more impressive to me when, when I see a logo. It's like this it guy. It shows attention to detail that I really like. Yeah. Yeah. I, I disagree. Oh. Okay. Yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> I, I want a photo. Because half 
maybe maybe it's half of what we are trying to get is for clients to remember us as a person. So the more they can see your face on Instagram and your about page, the more they're going to remember you and feel like they know you and associate you with your work. But it's hard with a logo. How, how, they can't really remember that. I agree with that. Like sure. logo, the re- re- repetition in branding, whether it's a logo or a face, the repetition is the important part. But I agree. I like to see a face. I want your gorgeous bio photo to be you making eye contact with a camera photographed in a style that's similar to how you shoot. And I like for that image to repeat itself on your about page, on your LinkedIn page, and on your Instagram. This is good stuff. God, if we stopped right here, I'd be like, okay, I got a lot of it. <laughs> but All I right. want to say style guide is the word I was using for, uh, looking for that hmm. Julie said, style guide. And if you can work with a designer to create your branding, they will they will create a style guide for you. So they'll give you the whole package, your fonts, your colors, your logo, your favicon. They'll create all those things for you. And that's a great thing to have in any business. That is so true because whatever you do, like (laughs) signing up for some new website, I'm going to talk about Clubhouse later, but Mm. anything you need to keep referring back to that and use elements from it. If you want to add graphic assets to your Insta stories, you Mm -hmm. want to keep going back to your style guide and stick to it. Yeah. That's yeah. It takes the guesswork out when you don't really have to go like everything you design, you don't, you're not starting from scratch. You already know what's going into it. You know, the different elements that you're using. So it just simplifies everything and makes it like so much easier for your brain to process. And probably faster for you to keep yeah. stay fresh. I'm going to add new things, but it's going to come from this. So you don't have to rethink the whole thing. Right. I think that's where a lot of people get stuck too, is that they like, they don't know where to start with marketing sometimes. So making everything as easy and as efficient as possible is is a big part of making sure you're consistent. You guys ready for a question from our audience? Sure. Bring it. A web platform for email list building is the good, is the go-to for 2021. What do you guys think? There's so many like agency access, Yoda list, those. Yeah, but that's what we're talking CRMs, about. CRMs, you mean? Probably. Or for... We don't know. Yes. Yes. Oh. Does I anybody use, thoughts? I use direct mail. Um, I've heard Flowdesk is really good. There's oh. so many. Flowdesk is expensive, but they have really good templates. It's very unique. But it's about the list though. I mean, for me, like, and then someone asks, you know, how do you, when someone unsubscribes, how do you connect to them, you know? And my issue with those marketing uh, platforms is that more and more people are unsubscribing and I, I, I can't get to the people I really want to get to. So how do you circumvent that particular problem? Mm-hmm. I no longer use agency access because of that issue. Mm. Oh, you mean unsubscribe from the list service? Well, yeah, you just, and people don't want to be, they want to get off. They want to, you know, so the majority of people that they offer are not willing to take emails. Yeah. There's a lot of people have trouble with MailChimp because everyone uses it. And I'm wondering if it tends to go more into my junk folder from MailChimp. I'm just not Mm to, that's what I'm thinking about. I've heard that from agency act or with agency access that a lot of people feel like those emails go into spam. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's kind of no answer, but to answer your question, Hugh, I would say it's Instagram. Mm-hmm. That's where people are. Mm-hmm. So if they're not yeah. getting your emails, you try something else. And if someone unsubscribes, you do have to respect that and like, totally, you know, definitely connect on social media. But um, yeah, just, you know, that's, that's their that's their wish. Yeah, LinkedIn is also a good way to to try to find someone's email address. You know, just see if they're on LinkedIn and maybe get a connection there. You can always ask too. You know, reaching out on, and I think we're, we might go over this later, but reaching out on LinkedIn or on um, on Instagram and asking people. You know, I'd love to send you some of my work. Could I? Would you share your email address or? What I also advise people to do before sending out an email promo is to put on their social social media, you know, I'm sending out my next newsletter on Tuesday. If you want to receive a copy, send me your email address. Yes. And then they can just, you know, they just respond to the, 
the post on Instagram or something. Um, yeah. But then they've had the opportunity to opt in without you necessarily having to like hunt them down. Somewhere. That's definitely the best way, but I don't know that it works for the mass, the people mm -hmm. who don't know you yet. Right. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard for them, but it, it can be a good way to marry the people that are on your social media who you can't find other contact information for. I want to jump into social media because mm -hmm. yes, it's so big. It's right. so big. It is to me the biggest category of today. And this one can make or break someone's career to know how to use it, when to use it. What is your view on social media in general uh, right now? It's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Instagram is still like such an important way to connect with, um, you know, with potential clients uh, outside of getting your work in front of them by individual emails or the email newsletters. That's really the number one way to reach someone without getting them to come to your website. Because how would they know about your website, right? If they're not searching for you. So this is a way that you can get your work in front of people who aren't necessarily looking for you. I do see it. And I've said this is this, it's your second website. It's your backup, the feed. There are two parts to Instagram, the, the feed posts, and then Insta stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So really, I feel like we can't even say Instagram anymore. It's two parted. What do you mean? Yeah. So the feed I feel is your second website and you have to have it looking like your work. Not mm -hmm. so many personal shots. Personal stuff goes in Insta stories. Mm. I agree with that. I think your Instagram should be your second website. I actually love the idea of using your highlights as your categories. I think we talked about that a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. And if we're including LinkedIn in social media, I think LinkedIn is incredibly important. I feel that if people are considering hiring you and they don't know you, they're going to go to your website, to your about page first, and then they're going to go to your LinkedIn to see if you have any connections in common. That's how they build trust with you. And LinkedIn has changed quite a bit in the past couple of years, the way it works. And I love it so much because if you post an article or a post and someone in your network likes it or comments on it, then their entire connection, group of connections, all of their connections can see your post because it says so-and-so just like this post. So I think LinkedIn is very power powerful. And that's also, that's where all these agency, all these ad agency people hang out because they like to to promote their work and their creative on there. To each but other. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. That's yeah, cute. I agree with that. Um, it seems like there is a, a shift back to it. I remember early on, it was a big thing, then it waned and Facebook would kind of replaced it. Now it's back again. So I agree with that. Do Great you guys one. think Facebook is still relevant for our marketing? Mm -mm. I <laughs> I think it's relevant for like community, but not, I don't think it's a great way. I, I'm a part of some groups where occasionally someone will write in and say they're like an art producer and they're looking for a photographer for a specific project. But it seems like the main benefit is just to, to have a community that's supportive to you. Yeah. I think like image makers, that's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's what I'm referring to actually. They, but they can talk to each other too as photographers. Yeah. There's yeah. so much good information in that group. Yeah, there is. And I, but I think it's more of a resource for photographers. Like yeah. where's the best studio, you know? Yeah. In the South or Not whatever. necessarily marketing. Yeah. yeah. I want to plug my Ask Stern Rep Facebook group because I really, I like to really talk to photographers. It's my place to just talk one-on-one -on -one questions, answer. So please go there. Okay. Um, you feel like people are talking to you there? I want more, but yes. <laughs> Yeah, because I have a Facebook group too, and it's like crickets, even though I'm like, hi, I'm here to talk to you for free. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm surprised That's more crazy. people don't log on, join in. Like, what did you say, Julie? Oh, I was saying it's a missed opportunity if people aren't talking to you in your Facebook group. Yeah. Well, plug it. Plug it now. <laughs> Conversation yeah. going, man. This is your how, <laughs> how do you think photographers can keep it fresh and strong on Instagram? And I say that because I think everyone's exhausted by it. 
to do two posts, what, every day, mm-hmm. a story and a feed, like, I think that's too much though. I don't, we, I don't know if we need every day, but, um, I mean, I like to say like three to five times a week, we should be posting just, you know, enough to stay in front of people. Um, actually in our comments here, Justin Sisson is a great example. If anyone wants to look at his Instagram, um, of someone who's done something creative with the layout that I really love, all of his images are in our diptychs and it flows really nicely throughout the whole thing. So you're able to see like a cool and interesting grid, but it's not restrictive to him in terms of like updating it all the time. He's not posting like six images at once. Um, But I love to encourage people to get creative with it. You know, we don't have to all be doing the same thing. And as Amy said, you know, highlights can be a great place to show the categories that you want on your site or the work that you want to be getting, you know, should treat that as as you would on your site, but you could also show fun personal projects in them that you're not really ready to put on the site yet. Or, you know, you can find different and creative ways to approach Instagram. And that's really what I would encourage people at this point. Can I ask about how much text you should be including with your Instagram posts? You know, some people choose to like just two lines. Some people, I I tend to have a tendency to go on because Mm -hmm. I like to share my process. Are you talking feed or Insta story? This is the feed. This is the mm-hmm. feed I'm talking about. You know, is there yeah. a rule to that, or is it just like people are just going to either decide to read it or they're just going to move on? You know, I have an answer. If there's stuff to say, yeah, write yeah. it. And if there isn't, don't try to say anything. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. yeah, I agree. With that. I include a lot of text. Also, remember to make it visually appealing. So you want to use like breaks throughout the text, so it's not just one one paragraph block, or I think, I think people are quick to kind of just be like, oh gosh, I can't deal with this, you know, like make it consumable to people. That's a great, so many good tips. I'm trying to write them down as we're going. I think sharing behind the scenes stuff too is really nice because it gives an idea to your audience, what, how you do things. How are you handling this particular problem? Mm -hmm. So I show the I show the image and then I show behind the scenes. And I might even say that that image is this construction or this is the lighting that we chose, what, you know, referencing each of the photos that are coming from the, from the back. I bet because back that's end. your work, Hugh, that is so interesting. Like people really want to see that. Yeah, but I, yeah, but if you have an interesting process, share it, you know, share yeah. it. And people yeah. really, really like that. Even the art directors talk, you know, I get, comments from art directors and also if if you can use if you can use that copy space to engage your audience as well if you can ask Uh, an intriguing question or if you can ask for an opinion then that gets them engaged which means you'll start coming up in their feed more often that's right engagement is really the most important part i think and i think people will if you're consistent about doing you know quick questions versus long stories about your process, people Mm -hmm. will start to come to expect that. um, And they'll know, oh, it's Hugh. I know he's going to tell me something interesting. So I'll open it up and I'll read the full caption there. Mm. Yeah, true. Yeah. I love that engagement part. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Really good. That, uh, that, and that read, that will help your algorithms. The more you engage, the more others are going to see you. One thing I like to point out to photographers who can do this and are good at this is to be more personal on Insta stories. It's another layer of marketing that can help you be known. It can grab people's attention, remember you. Mm-hmm. So that's a one way to keep it fresh because those are disappear in 24 hours. So yeah. if you don't love it of yourself, eh, whatever. Yeah, that's true. I think that's, I think that's smart. I think that's smart. <clears throat> I, so I talked about engagement. I'm moving down my list of questions. We have a question about social media marketing. Which ones are useful? How often to post? Connecting engagement etiquette, Instagram, LinkedIn, et cetera. Do I have to be on social media? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <Period>. <laughs> I remember talking to someone, this was like a year and a half ago. I was someone I was consulting with and he was like, I asked him, cause I usually ask people like, you know, what is your relationship like with social media? What does that look like for you? 
Um, and he was like, you know, I just don't really see the point in using Instagram. Like, I don't really think it's important. And I was like, oh my God, like I almost, like my heart stopped a little bit. And was like, okay, okay. <laughs> Obviously we need to like do some work here. Um, you absolutely need to be there. Most of those questions, Andrew, I feel like we did just finish, um, you know, talking about, but yeah, you have to be there. You have to be consistent. You're trying to get engagement um, and you're trying to connect with people. You know, that that's a big part of what marketing is, is connecting with people. So, you know, you got to be there. You can't just excuse yourself. Yeah. I tell my clients, if you can show up for Instagram once or twice a week with Instagram and LinkedIn, the more you show up and the more engagement you get, the better it's going to be for Instagram. Even if you don't have new work to post in your feed every week, I say still go there. And also when you're building your client list, make sure you have their Instagram handles in your spreadsheet if they're using Instagram for work and go and engage with them. So if you don't have something to post, even if you do have something to post, go and engage with them. Engage, it's like, like their feed or whatever they posted, comment if you can find an authentic I know that Andrea loves it when you reply to someone's stories, when you're engaging with them, then when you go to post your thing a few minutes later, it's going to pop up in their feed if they're following you. Mm -hmm. so, um, I mean, Ooh. post at a rate that feels comfortable for you. I know it's really hard right now. People aren't shooting as much as they used to be. So if you don't have new work, don't sweat it too much. Just make sure you're showing up and engaging at least with other people. And that goes for LinkedIn too. Yeah, I would second that. It, it even if you don't have work to share, that doesn't mean that you can't be a part of the, you know, a part of the community. Although the I think one thing about marketing that I think will help everyone is that you don't have to think about it as promoting yourself, selling yourself. Just go and engage with what other people are doing. Start a conversation. Mm -hmm. Let lift some of that pressure off your shoulders. Just go make some friends. <laughs> yeah because they want that too i have two yeah. things i have to say here the feed is not timely you can show old work because mm -hmm. because that is going to be used in the future for people to scroll down and see your see your second portfolio so it doesn't have to be new it's the stories that are instagram stories are timely that has to be but dms are the most important i think i get shocking responses from dms and especially if i have an insta story going on if my circle is red probably because i'm in their inbox they're going to click on that it's a great way to get to people but dms meaning as you just said amy on their insta story comment on that mm -hmm. it's i could explain why but do i need to explain why no do it that um way. You guys ready for another question? Yeah. This is related. Um, do photographers use blogs anymore or is Instagram the new blog? LinkedIn I, is the new blog. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And I also get worried when I see a photographer says blog on their menu. I'm like, oh God, no, most times it's going to say <laughs> last year or 2018 or yeah, you're not keeping up on your blog. For any reason, do not have it. That's get rid of it. I, I do think, think it's okay to use the blog feature on a website as like a, a recent work section if you wanted, where you could show a campaign, maybe talk about it, but just have it organized chronologically for you. But I think the word blog also, like when people hear it, we're like, oh, Tumblr, like now this doesn't sound as professional anymore. Like it's not. I'm not really getting like a high level professional commercial photographer vibe from that word. Mm. Well, so what I do is I connect my Instagram to Tumblr and then it just push the button and though that posting goes to my Tumblr feed. But in those ones that I have go on Tumblr are long explanations of my process. So it is in a sense blogging, mm. but I just use that feature, like just put it, push it over to there. I don't know if anybody's reading it. They're going to see more of it on Instagram, but I think that's a really good good question about Instagram is the new blog. Yeah, blog. It's, it's, no one's going to go read your blog. 
<laughs> so, but I still think it can be a good place. It can be a good place for SEO purposes. It is. But don't put a lot of time in it. Definitely don't write a lot. People aren't going to read it. Read it. Yeah. True, true. Read that. Here's a big question. How do I make sure art buyers and creative directors see my posts? On Instagram. Engaging with them first. Yeah. Like you just said, that was brilliant, Amy. So you write on or comment on their feed and then you then you post. post. And you're gonna come up on their feed. Mm -hmm. Cause if right. people have their notifications on, mm -hmm. it's gonna be like, Amy just left a comment on your thing. And they'll be like, oh, let me open Instagram. And then they go to their feed uh -huh. and they're like, oh, Amy just posted something. Now I'm seeing her thing. That's brilliant. That's um, what about, let me, someone, someone else asked, what, with a small number of followers, how do we increase them on Instagram? What groups should we join? Groups. Groups yeah. on Instagram? There are no groups on Instagram. Um, well, maybe. What groups can they join to get more Instagram uh, followers? Well, you can always just go. I mean, you can be the one to start the engagement with people. You know, go. I always tell people if you're looking for people to follow that might be potential or might be interested in your work, go and look at photo agents accounts. Um, and if you can't, something like, you know, RPA has that art production account. Um, yeah. something like that go and see who's following them and who they're following if you find someone who you know if it says art producer at you know Wyden and Kennedy and they're clearly you it's you know not a private account and they're using it for work that that person seems like they're going to be open to connecting so you know feel free to follow them you know look at their stories comment if it feels organic um, but you know be the one to be proactive don't just wait for people to come to you but, and if but, you do want people to come to you, make sure you're using hashtags, you're at tagging people and you're tagging people on the image, you're tagging brands on the image, tag your entire crew on the image because then that's going to show up in their photos. And um, maybe they'll reshare it. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. But there's no guarantee on increasing your followers, but those are steps to take to try to increase your followers. Yes, I think it also depends on who do you want your followers to be? Do you want your followers to be foodies? Do you want them to be photo editors? That's gonna, that's gonna inform your strategy. But also, I know you're gonna talk about this later, Andrea. Every yeah. time I show up and speak on Clubhouse, I get tons of Instagram followers. Me too. Mm. That's really working. Mm -hmm. That Clubhouse, we could jump there, but I wanted okay. to talk database maintenance. And I know we have 15 minutes left and we covered one topic. This always happens with you guys. <laughs> That's gonna be uh, regular, man. What do you think? Should we try to move faster or I don't wanna make cut no, off? I think, it's, I, think, I think it's gotta be rich. I think we have to dive into these subjects a little more instead of okay. trying to- Let's uh, ask the audience. Do you, you want a five part series? <laughs> <laughs> I sure like it. Raise your hand. <laughs> Raise your hand, everyone. Tell us in the chat. Do you want Julie and I to come back for the rest of 2021? Yeah, oh, overwhelming. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Are there other social media questions? <laughs> oh my gosh, all of these. Look at this. Oh, look at the, the crowd has spoken. Oh, we love you guys. <laughs> are there more? Goes. All right, stop this business. Is there? <laughs> Are there more social media questions that have come in? Do we need, do we have any more of those? Uh, here's one. Uh, what are your thoughts about Pinterest? I've been hearing a lot lately that Pinterest is actually a major player now for driving website traffic. Hmm, really interesting. What do you guys yeah. think? So Pinterest is good because um, as, a, you know, like Instagram, you post something in your static feed and then it's not really being seen by people again, unless they go to your profile, right? It doesn't go through their feed again. Pinterest is different. That content can take off at any point if someone just starts resharing it and then it gets spread around. So the benefit of Pinterest is that it has a longer shelf life. The stuff that you post there has a longer shelf life um, and you can continue to see results from things that you posted, you know, four years ago, just consistently. So in that way, it's good. Just strategically, it's a good platform. I think it really depends on 
what your goals are. Um, I don't know that like a sport photographer is really gonna see anything like great come out of using Pinterest career-wise, but like a food photographer might, you know, yeah. that's because that's who's using it. It's primarily women. It's primarily women who are, you know, between like 35 and 55, I think something like that. Um, and people do want content that they can save and that they can, you know, use later. So they're gonna, they're gonna be keeping that somewhere. Primarily. I, do, I know that art directors and creative directors are still sometimes using it to do their own storyboards. So yeah. if they are storyboarding a campaign and your image is in it, that could work out really well for you. Maybe their client sees their board and they're like, who's this photographer? So on that note, make sure that you are tagging your images very literally, like, you know, avocado toast by the beach or whatever. Um, some art directors are still using it to create their their inspiration and storyboards. Mm -hmm. Love this. It's yeah. a question I so didn't. Know. Would but you post, you know, behind the scenes stuff on Pinterest too? You know, no, just imagery. Okay. Good I go. I noticed on my uh, Google Analytics that I check out and I make sure I'm kind of you know what's working and what's not working. Pinterest works huge so many people it drives so much traffic as you were saying very to, effective mm -hmm. to my website okay, wow. yeah, yeah. really use google analytics to help you make these decisions mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. pay attention and right. yeah yeah okay i was what? about to get into directories on that but yeah pay attention to your traffic <laughs> <laughs> okay now we're all curious what did what were you gonna say what was it gonna be <laughs> oh i was gonna say I was going to start talking about photo directory. So if you're paying for a photography directory, like a, like, um, agency like or machine or something like that, oh. make sure you're checking your analytics to see if you're getting, you know, your money's oh. worth. That's right. That's really smart. That can answer the questions. Cause as you said, for a food photographer, it could really work, for, but for a sport photographer, maybe not. So you can figure out what is working and yeah, then, yeah. you know, because there are a lot of paid companies, but yes, that was another topic. We could have a whole other episode just on analytics oh. <laughs> and how to use them to work for you. Well, I think that's we we real. I'm in, I'm totally in, you guys. So I'm sure our audience is too. Uh, let me ask you this: Here's a really good question. Are there any copyright concerns with Pinterest? Mm. Ooh, gosh. Uh, and this is what I had. To, can I answer that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Here's your, here, here, don't worry about your copyright. Just register your work, register your work at the copyright office, and then hire a law firm to go that has the capability of going after those infringers. And hopefully it'll work out and be fruitful for you. Um, that's something I'm doing right now. And I'm, it's helped me, you know, it's just icing on the cake. I get a check every month or so from copyright lawsuits um, that have been taking place from people, you know, swiping my work and using it on their website. So mm -hmm. uh, just copyright your work. It's, I know it's time consuming, but do it because it really works out. You, where do, where do people do that? Well, there's, there is, uh, Pixie is one service that you can use, P-I-X-S-Y. This is so helpful. Yeah. 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 I would I would second that. It, it's so much smarter to just wait for people to make the mistake of stealing your work and then you can go after them instead of limiting your own marketing just to stop someone from doing something that's oh. illegal for them anyway. Oh. No watermarks. I don't put any watermarks on my work. <laughs> no, just it's bait. It's just yeah. like, here you go. All right. Yeah. Wow. So this is great. This it's a whole new approach. Like you can use it for your advantage mm. versus it becomes a defensive thing. Yeah. Well, you don't benefit if you're being defensive because then you're restricting, yeah, you're restricting your marketing, you're restricting who can see your work. So you're the one yeah. who's getting hurt by that. No. No. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Any other social media questions? I'm not sure if I should move on to another topic or not. Uh, I'm not getting anything. Let's move on to the next topic. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yay. Okay, quickly then. We'll have 10 minutes for database maintenance. It's a really big, big one. Um, I break the I break this out into clients info that we already have and the clients info that we want to find. 
Do you guys have any kind of system you recommend for photographers to begin their maintenance of their database? I think I always tell people when they're starting off to start with like just writing down like the agency or the brand or the magazine first um, and start your list that way and then go through and start adding the contacts because from there, you know, if you have New York Times on your list, it's easier to start with that. And then you can just go to like LinkedIn and look up photo editor, New York Times, get all of those people, put it onto your list. And then, you know, like you said, segments so that you have like the people that you don't know yet or the people that you have talked to, these are separate categories, but yeah, just start off with who your goal client is and then do the work of finding that, those individuals. I have my clients just free write a list of a hundred companies, brands, magazines, that they want to work for, just free write it. And then I have them rate the company on a scale of one to 10 or whatever, and then take their top. So depending on how much time you have to spend on marketing, um, if you have time to direct mail 10 people or 50 people, so take your top 10 or your top 50. And those are the people that you commit to engage with on a weekly basis. And maybe it's only five, that's fine. And then of course you want to break it out into... Um, you know, these are my lifestyle people. These are my fashion people. And that will, that will help you keep things organized too. I think you can color code it if you want. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I find it gets harder and harder, harder. The more people I want to get and the more people I do have, it just makes it a little more harder to figure out time-wise scheduling. Do you guys have any scheduling advice? For like scheduling outreach? Yes. And how, like which group gets what? Yeah. How often I should do that? Well, you can use, um, I mean, using a proper CRM is going to help with that um, because that'll tell you, you know, when you've reached out to people, when it's time to reach out to someone again. Um, HubSpot has a really good free version for people starting out um, that I would recommend. That's something that I've used in the past. Uh, I, I think what I like to tell people or what we've talked about a little bit before is that like, you kind of want to have like every week you're reaching out to five or, you know, let's say five or 10 people, right? If you're going through and let's say half of them are new clients and half of them are following up with the old clients, you're just always going to have sort of an evolving like cycle, if that makes sense, you know? They turn from one to the other. Right. Yeah. So you'll just go through and say, okay, this week I'm going to reach out to five new clients. I'm going to look them up on LinkedIn or, you know, look on you know, see what campaigns are coming out, like find the people who worked on them. And then the, the other half, those other five people, that's going to be someone that I reached out to in the past, but I need to follow up with them. I love that. I get a little frustrated because, okay, I'm on LinkedIn and I connect with the person. Then what? Well, I ask for their email. Okay. I get that. Okay. I can ask for their Instagram or I can just search for it. I get that. Put them on my email list but I'm not as proactive. Once I get their name up from LinkedIn and their connection, they're connected with me, it loses its punch. I mean, mm -hmm. I got to stay on it, but it takes it to another place. But I find the most impactful time is when I'm first saying hi. And I always put a note, by the way, always with their name, everything's spelled correctly. And I make it as personal as I can. Maybe I comment on their glasses or whatever their backsplash. But on LinkedIn, once you connect with them, do you guys have any thoughts or advice on that? Yeah, that's where I say create your top 10 and then get, make yourself an appointment every week to go engage with them either on Instagram or LinkedIn or both. And then I think you just need to go and reevaluate your list every you know, six months to a year and say, has, has this engagement gone anywhere? If not, maybe slip them out of your top 10 and put someone else in there. Or it's try a lot something of work. different. Mm -hmm. Like you even a personal note. Mm. Yes. Yeah. If Always. you're using all of these different platforms as well, you're, you are going to be getting yourself in front of people on a regular basis anyway. So like, Andrew, if you meet someone, um, you know, added a networking event. And then later, you know, a few days later, you follow up by connecting with them on LinkedIn. Maybe you look for them on Instagram as well. You can add them to your mailing list. You know, you got their business cards. So you already have their, their email address. Now, just going forward, you participating in social media is going to be you 
getting your work in front of them on a regular basis. Right. Because they'll be posting things to LinkedIn, you'll be posting things to Instagram, you're sending out your newsletters every few months. Um, and so then at that point, sending out those direct emails where you're like connecting with just them or something like that can happen again every few months. Maybe if you notice, oh, I haven't, I haven't connected with them at all in a while. They haven't seen a newsletter in a while. I'm going to follow up. But if you connect with them on these different platforms, you don't have to spend as much time thinking about like, have I, have they heard from me enough? Because they have, they're on LinkedIn with you, they're on Instagram, they're getting your newsletters, you know, they, they're already seeing you around. And the, the, the engagement that we've been talking about. Yeah. Make mm -hmm. sure you just keep engaging. Maybe you pick your top 10, 20 clients and you make sure you engage. Like mm -hmm. I like to break it out into hot, warm, cold. I love that. Those mm -hmm. who I've worked with and know me, <laughs> hot, warm, they know me, but I got to stay on it cold. They don't know me. I really want to pick our top ones and engage with them on a weekly basis. You choose an amount of, amount of days or engagements that you're going to do. Maybe have your precious dream list for this Yeah, and, yeah. and schedule the time for it. That's, I like that idea. Hot, warm, cold. I really like yeah. that. Yeah. Cause they should be treated differently. So, and I also think you just uh, shouldn't be discouraged if they're not getting back to you. You know, that's the thing. People are busy, right. but they are seeing your work. It's very uh, rare they do get back to us. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they say it takes at least four times engagement in order for them to remember you at a certain time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <clears throat> with, <clears throat> with, excuse me, there's one question here I wanted to ask. Um, you see, hold on. Du, 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 hold du, du, du. on, hold it back to you. How can okay. photographers stay on top of what is new? What is out there and learn from all the, about all the options? Hmm. New well, about what? Yeah, social media. Hmm. Well, what is new for them to be doing with their database? I'm not sure what this person meant, but maybe well, one yeah. thing, Amy Cooper, V Cooper, you, you did that article on a photo editor Mm -hmm. about the paid so, resources yeah watch the apa webinars follow a photo editor follow ask stern rep oh absolutely follow, Julie, follow me we'll keep you posted <laughs> clubhouse Love yeah that. a photo oh. there's a great resource by the way we lost you on uh, that rob rob oh, a photo editor. Um, yeah oh a photo editor rob haggard's website it's really mm -hmm. informative also asmp as well as you said, APA. Yes. And there was another one. I Oh, Art of Freelance. That's yeah. with Matthew Young. Great yeah. one. Mm -hmm. I don't know, finding your groups. Yeah. And we talked about that with Facebook too, of finding, you know, your LA image makers, New York image makers, all of those. Um, it, it, it's important to have that, those sounding boards. So, you know, stay on top, just follow everyone who's, you know, like you know, all of us, obviously. Um, but then, yeah, find your, find your people, find a little yes. group that you can um, throw ideas around with. And obviously Clubhouse, jo come join us all on Clubhouse. I have a question from Shona. I think I'm saying it right. Which title are the best to reach out to for a photographer looking to work with an agency? So on LinkedIn, you can do filters and you can mm -hmm. put in the titles you're looking for. I mm -hmm. can just answer this. Yeah. yeah, you guys want to answer this? We're not going to have different opinions. So, <laughs> okay, I put creative director, creative producer, art producer, art buyer, designer, and marketing. Those are the titles I search for. I think you should start with art buyers and art producers, and then go to creative directors. Those they're going to have the most influence. Yes. But if you have the bandwidth to follow more people, don't forget about copywriters and art directors because they sometimes I forgot art director art directors. yeah directors. Do you yeah. Have copywriters too yeah yeah having oh. worked at an agency that sometimes the copywriters will because the a lot of and something people may not know is that when people have the title creative director they may be coming from a copywriting background or they may wow. be coming from an art direction graphic design yes. background so that's another thing to think about I was in a clubhouse group and someone who worked at an agency said also the account account person, account mm -hmm. supervisor, account executive. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's more of a hierarchy than like a yes or no to a lot of these also, yeah. you know, like Amy said, like art producer, art buyer is really where you should yeah. be starting, but like art directors and creative directors, you know, first of all, they are all interested in creative work as well. So like, by all means, share your work just because they might be interested in it. But, you know, those, those people can have a say as well. And then it just kind of trickles down, you know, like the janitor is probably at the bottom of the list. Like, <laughs> but maybe he likes photography. I don't know. Like, or she. Or she. You're right. You're right. You're right. I, shouldn't have, I shouldn't have made that Wait, assumption. I'm going to ask one more question and then we're going to have to do this again for paid resources and networking options. And then COVID time changes. We have a lot. See, <laughs> too much for you guys. <laughs> Do you think that Clubhouse has value? I've just recently joined and it seems to. And Stephen asked us that. Yay, yes, it does. We have a lot to say on Clubhouse. It's so fun. <laughs> it might be, the, might be a big part of our next talk because if this is new and up and coming, this is the time to talk about it. And how to do it strategically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys have any thoughts you wanna add on? Clubhouse at this? I have not hosted anything on Clubhouse yet, but um, Amy, I know you have, so maybe that's, maybe you would have more insight there. So I'm trying to think about it from the perspective of a photographer. It's great for me and my business because I can go on there and get, give people free advice and then they start following me. And like I said, I get a lot of followers on Instagram. I do have at least one client who has gotten work from Clubhouse. So think about what rooms you're going in. So if you're just going in rooms where other photographers are talking about photography, that's great. But where are the creative directors going? Where are the photo editors going? See if you can try to find those people. And I think that can just help you broaden your network and discover new people. That's really well, smart. Well, where do you, <clears throat> Amy, where do you go to find? Producers? Well, there's topics. Sorry, I'm Amy now. Topic. There's topics, <laughs> creative, creative thinking, creative. I, I made that one of my topics and I see all these, but a Amy, please answer for yourself. <laughs> yeah, you just have to search for the topics, you know, um, okay. or just search for photo editor or search for, mm. you know, I don't know if that, you know, it's so new. I don't know if all of those clubs have been built right. yet, so to right, speak. Yeah. Um, but That's maybe good... like graphic designers, maybe there's advertising rooms that could be beneficial. Advertising would probably be a good search to try. That was a really good point of, um, that if they haven't been created yet, we are in this stage of Clubhouse and I say this to everyone, jump in now, get yourself invited, mm -hmm. jump in now. Now's the time. It's, it reminds me of the early Instagram days and how many people wish they started back then because they got more followers. This is the time you can really make a difference on Clubhouse. Yeah. Yeah. I've started doing my free Friday office hours on Clubhouse. Um, and that has been so much fun. Julie and Andrea and Mary Dale joined me last week. Yeah. We just spoiled all these photographers. Yeah. Right. That was so great. <laughs> I'm not doing it this week because I'm here, but I'll try to be there every Friday. What do you mean? You're not going on Clubhouse? No, I have an exam on Friday, but since I'm doing this, this week, I'm giving myself a break from Friday, but I'll be back next Friday. Okay. So Friday, I know it's 10 a.m. Pacific Coast time. time. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. I really, Clubhouse, I guess we shouldn't keep going on about it and we have to end this soon, but. We need a club, an Amy, Julie, Andrea club. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do it. <laughs> you, you're going to get on there. <laughs> I'm in there. I'm in there. I'm just, I haven't really even started. So you got to be a guest. I'm going to do my homework before next month. But I think this, uh, if, do we have a, but we should be talking about Clubhouse. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you got to be on there, by the way. Okay. But we, okay. we should, we should move on and kind of end this, but stay with us for our wrap chat. Um, any words of wisdom, any extra thoughts that you guys might have that didn't get covered? <clears throat> no, we covered everything. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, social media is such like a tricky subject for people. Um, but you know, when in doubt, if you're struggling, that's why Amy and I are here. So <laughs> give us a call. We can talk about the ledge. Don't don't feel pressured to make your social media strategy or any marketing strategy. It doesn't have to look like anyone else's. 
do what's comfortable comfortable for you and figure out how much time you have to spend on it and make the most use of that time. And I think having, again, a marketing calendar, something that you can go to and look at. So when you do have time to sit down, you're not spinning out trying to figure out what you need to do. You already yeah. know what you can do on that day and block your time to do it. Just do it. Yeah. Aim to simplify your process. Mm. Yeah. In what way? Well, um, you know, relying on a calendar that you've put together, using scheduling tools like later, um, you know, having a style guide set up in case you do want to use, you know, specific colors or, you know, fonts or anything like that. Even like tone and voice, it can just take a lot of the guesswork out if you have all of those, all of those tools that are set up to help you. Otherwise, it's like sitting down every day and looking at your phone and you're like, oh my gosh, like, what am I going to post? How do I talk about it? Where does it go? What do I do next? Like that, that's just so overwhelming. Yeah, we at Stern Rep, we have our feed. Thank you, Rainy. Rainy Vespi. She helps me do this one month in advance. On Only Pulp, we do our entire mm -hmm. feed. So it's ready to go. It's color coordinated. It flows together. And it's in advance to do this every day. Mm -hmm. And it's the stories too. We have ready, prepared. We know which day yeah. we're going to do. What are the holidays coming up? We have it all arranged because every day, how do you know you're going to be in the mood or, and then you let it go. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And you're yeah. killing it, Andrea. <laughs> you're putting us all to shame. Well, <laughs> I love this. I think, I think the big, you know, for me here listening to you guys is the relief for me is like, get someone to do this with you you know, and having help yeah. on doing it, I think can alleviate a lot of problems. <clears throat> Getting a, an underling, you know, a student or someone, you know, even my 21 year old daughter, get her in here because she knows how to navigate through that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. get yourself yeah. a teenager because they're going to tell you what's happening next. <laughs> Although I got to say, I'm going to talk about Rainy for a minute because I use Rainy in everything I'm doing, Rainy Vespi, and she knows she's not 21, but she knows this yeah. and does it right. So it's worth the money to do this right. Find yeah. the right people. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, and that's part very... of having like business mindset as well around being a photographer that I think a lot of people don't think of initially, but like, you know, you're not a jack of all trades. No one's expecting you to like know how to do everything. You're not an accountant. You don't do that yourself, you know? There's no reason that you can't, um, can't reach out. And if it's, you know, maybe you can go on, like Upwork is a great resource that I direct people to a lot. If you want someone who can just set up your social media for you, someone young, you pay them a few hundred dollars a month and then it's, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Yes, that's a great one, Upwork. Mm -hmm. So one final question for all of us, why are the four of us doing this? What does this type of extracurricular activity do for us? Hmm. I can, I'll speak first. Okay. <laughs> I, it brings meaning and purpose to my life to do Ask Stern Rep, to do this webinar, to do the clubhouse. I have to feel like I'm giving, I'm feeding all of myself. I'm not just a rep to negotiate money, which I do love, but there's more to me. And I get to fuel that person to be a better rep by doing this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why are we doing this? Like, why are we doing this webinar? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, the, I first started doing it because I was like, how do I get Andrea Stern on the phone? Because she's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also wanted to, I think in marketing, the more you give, the more you get back. Ooh. But also I started learning so much from Julie. I'm just excited to see her every time. Um, and to have an excuse to get dressed and put on some makeup. <laughs> Very perfume, you guys. I was so excited today that I was like, ooh, and I was like, you're not going anywhere. Like no one. <laughs> I was like, there's lipstick on. Like, this is great. I love That's it. That's hilarious. Yeah. Why do you do this? Or Julie, did I interrupt you? Sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I was just going to say, I think it's great to be a part of it, you know, to be a part of a community, I think a lot of photography, the photography industry is like, you know, everyone kind of exists in this silo. Like we all are very separate from each other. You know, Amy yeah. and I are on like Zoom calls and phone calls 
you know, photographers are working maybe with their crew, maybe with an agent, but you're primarily working by yourself. So I think it's great to be able to form a bit of a community and to share information also, you know, to, um, to really like demystify the industry for a lot of people, I think is really satisfying. Ooh, these are good answers. I'm glad I asked this question. Yeah, I know, Andrea, it's kind of I'm like, you, for it. I know you have your, your agent group that you have now that is means so much to you. And when I was an agent, I couldn't find any agents to talk to me. And now as a consultant, we don't really talk to each other either to because I think we've all seen each other as competition in the past and now we realize okay there's enough for everyone and there's so much value in coming together and that's why I think for photographers you have to get out of your head you have to get out of your bubble if you can't work with an agent or a consultant just make sure you're working with someone else having conversations with other people who are in your world because it's going to be so inspiring and yeah and talk to other photographers Mm -hmm. yes I'm shocked that photographers don't really talk to each other as much as they, in my opinion, should. They do on Clubhouse all day long, like 24-7. <laughs> That's a good point. Hugh, why are you doing this webinar with us? Well, selfishly, I'm getting a lot of information and I get to meet people. But, you know, this is also part of, you know, a new drive of giving back. You know, I, I teach now and I like giving away my quote unquote secrets. Um, I don't really don't have any secrets, but I just like being able, to, knowing that I'm improving a photographer's life by, you know, being part of this program. And um, that feels good, it really does. So it's a way of me giving back, really. I love it. These are four, yeah. four great answers, if I may say. Mm. We are out of time. Thank you, Amy V. Cooper Ooh. and Julie Skarwecki. <laughs> and thank you, Hugh, for always doing this with me. I yeah, look forward to you. seeing you next month. You, all you attendees, please come back and follow us. Um, APALA, get on their mailing list. Get follow a, Ask Stern Rep, please. And that's thank you. Uh, thanks to our sponsor, Sammy's Camera. Um, and before you guys go, uh, a uh, an event is coming up on APA LA, it's Meet the Curator. This is um, th- this is the curator who's going to be judging the um, off the clock exhibit. And um, that's at Friday at one o'clock. So Friday one o'clock. Get to know her. So. Oh, also stay, stay on here. When we stop, we're gonna do a wrap chat. So stay on for Hugh and I to talk about these guys. Uh, <laughs> what else, Hugh? All right, ladies. But our cute so Yeah, really? Was that it? Okay, got it, got it. <laughs> Join APA. Join thank APA. You. And thank, thank you, you, Sammies. All right. Yep. Bye, guys. Thank, thank you, you, guys. Bye. Hi, Hugh. Hi. That was well, really good, huh? My God. I think that was more information. This is the first time I've, like, I've really put together a list of stuff that I've jotted down. Me too. There's so much to it. Um, wow. That was awesome. Thank you, Patricia. I see that. That was good. What did, I'd love to hear from you participants. What did you learn? Anything stand out for you that you learned from this that really impacted you and could change things? Yeah, put that in the chat box. I'd love to hear it. Yeah. There was Um, so much for me. Yeah. Gosh, even the signature that Amy said that, I was like, oh yeah. And then Pinterest, I didn't really... Think yeah, I had no it. idea about Pinterest being that, like something that's going, come, up and coming, even though it's been around forever. Um, scheduling time to reach out. Says Ryan. Yeah. I see that. The copywriting thing. Oh yeah, that you the pixie, that you're making money Pixies off great, people yeah. using your. That's right. On social media. Yeah. Yeah. That was so, brilliant. They have a team. Of, they have a team of copyright lawyers that are going after them. So. And I just watch the emails come in. Every, every correspondence that a lawyer has with an infringer, I see, you know? So it's really, it's really great. Do you pay them? Do you pay Pixie? They, they take, uh, well, so, yeah, it's indirectly through uh, Pixie, but there's, it's 50% cut. So, and if you register your work, you can go after punitive damages on Ooh. top of, actual damages so where do you um, register your work 
the copyright office, the United States Copyright Office. Super easy. It's like a low fee of 51 bucks or something for the year. You just have to organize all your work. Um, and there's guide, there's guidance that you can find on YouTube on how to do that, but it's super important. Oh, there was good stuff. These yeah. two, how do we, what do we do? These two are such good guests. Do we just keep bringing them on? What do I do? Uh, do we have someone for next month? Not yeah. yet. I've asked some people. I'm but... wondering if we could just stick with them for the next, the next one, because we have, there's, we haven't covered everything. Right. Yeah. And we have a bunch and of everyone, questions. Everyone, the, oh, it's overwhelming that they're, they're love. Look at the, look at the you know, chats coming in. Yeah. So. Maybe that. Yeah. A bit about Mailchimp says Ryan. I'm possibly being fed into spam. I know. I know. How do we send these mailers? Well, I'd love to learn that. How, why well, do they go that, to spam? Well, I've heard that PDFs have an easier time of or or, or let or it, it can get through the spam filters if you in, include a PDF rather than a JPEG. <clears throat> but I don't know that. Um, like I would, that would be an interesting person to talk to. How do we technically? get the email to the person. <laughs> Although so many companies don't allow a lot of images to come through or from people they don't know or work with. Well, Nothing it's crazy. You know, I, I may comment on that. I, it may be so, but I've sent big, um, you know, packages of, of work with, you know, images behind the scenes and to directly to these art directors or art buyers. Yeah. And they're getting them. They're getting them. Uh, yeah. Through email. Through email, personal email. This is the one where I go personal to- Personal email. These are personal emails that I sent out, not the marketing one. No, this is- this Oh, is, personal through you, but to their work address. Email. Yeah, that's right. Huh. Yep, and they're getting them. So I don't know if there's some um, um, algorithm that detects that it's coming from MailChimp or, or some other CRM, I don't know. Yeah. That's interesting um, stuff. No. I want to look at my notes. God, there was so much. <sighs> I'm going to look at a HubSpot too. That's uh, HubSpot. Thanks. Was it HubSpot to you um, mentioned? What? Ryan just talked about that. I don't remember. Creating a lot of video content for clients. David Sullivan. Oh, uh, okay. Oh. Yeah, Julie mentioned it. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna look into that. Thanks, I'm Ryan. I'm gonna read this chat. <laughs> I wasn't reading it, but I'm gonna now. Okay. Um, well, should we end our rap chat? I just I'm a little wordless. Yeah, there's it, it, so it takes a it's a lot to absorb. It's a lot to absorb. That's probably why. Um but yeah, let's see if we can get them on again. I know it's such an easy conversation. Yeah, I I'm feel really personally, I feel so in depth with it. Like I'm, I'm learning and I'm talking. We are, my goal with this whole thing was to feel like we're at a dinner table, just chatting, talking, sharing. And that's what is happening here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I love yeah. it. I love dinner parties too. <laughs> <laughs> so next time let's do it at dinner time and we'll share recipes on top of it. Um, anyway, yeah. sorry, I yeah. digress. But um, thanks again. For this, I really appreciate it, Andrea. Yeah. Thanks for being with me, Hugh. I can't do this without you. And let's thank Patty Silverstein. Patty, Yay. you're the best. You make this happen. Yeah. She is you the woman know. behind the curtain, ladies and gentlemen. Um, People and she, don't know. Yeah, she's the grease that keeps these wheels turning. Yeah. Um, all right, you guys. Join uh, APA. Let me finish with that part. Join APA. Join APA group that can change things and do things and you're yeah we're all about advocacy and support and community diversity uh, go on to APA LA and register for meet the curator um, I think she's gonna have a lot of information to share on Friday at two Friday at one o'clock one o'clock Pacific uh, Standard Time right okay all right thank you see you next month. <laughs>